Right. Good morning. It's Valerie Milano, the senior editor of the Hollywood Times. And I just want to welcome Herbie J. Pilato. Um, we've become really kind of good friends over the years and uh, just adore this man. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Here we go. Hey, Valerie, thank you so much for having me on your show. Congratulations on all the great things that are happening in, in your life and career. And I tell you, what was when, when did we meet? Was like nineteen or nineteen? No, is two thousand ten ish around there? I think so. Yeah. yeah, I was an on-air correspondent for CCN News, and I was doing right. reporting. Right, yeah, right. In Pasadena. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just uh, published my two new books, really, um, in the last couple months, and three new books total for this year. Uh, the, the Sean Connery biography, which I really just am very excited about. Uh, Barbara Carrera has written the foreword to the book. She was in uh, Never Say Never Again, which was his last movie as James Bond. And then Richard DeMarco, his lifelong friend from back in Scotland. I mean, lifelong ever since they were babies. He has written the introduction. So I'm very excited about that book. Then too, I have a bionic book, my um, revitalized, uh, updated version of the Bionic book in this 50th anniversary of the $6 million man debut on ABC in fall of 80 or fall of 73. And then the retroactive television book, which talks about, you know, the positive impact of classic TV shows that um, came out earlier in the year. And both the retro book and the Sean book are also available um, in audio book form. Love it, man. This, you can't stop this man. You just keep going um he's done so much for for television for classic television where has this inspiration come from i mean from to preserve classic media where did it come from i get you know i grew up in the inner city of rochester new york my parents didn't have a lot of money and and, and all of that so i gravitated in the 60s you know it was a difficult time for us all but i gravitated like many people to uh, TV at that time, which was more escapism, fair and fantasy, Star Trek, The Witch, you know, shows like that that were very fun and lighthearted. And I just, you know, really fell in love with Samantha, like the rest of us again. And I just felt drawn to that kind of um, show. And as I matured and, you know, became an adult and I saw how things really have changed so much in the media, there's a lot of great stuff out there. I mean, there's a lot of great movies a lot of great TV shows, but I don't see a lot of charm and I don't see a lot of uh, showmanship or likability, which were all um, represented, represented so well in the classic shows. So I'm drawn to that um, old school type programming, you know, for a lot of different reasons, mostly because it's it's fun and it's likable. You know, and I want to talk about a little bit more about Sean Connery. How extensive was your writing process for Connery, Sean Connery, you know, you did, you hit, did you hit any roadblocks during your drafts? Um, you know, it was kind of a difficult book to write because there had already been so many uh, Sean books out there, bios, and there were a lot of James Bond books too. And I, but I wanted still, I felt drawn to it. I wanted to um, have it be different. And I wanted to explore his personality because he's he was attacked later in his life, you know, for his uh, somewhat disrespect for women, a lot of disrespect for women, for certain women. But other women loved him. You know, many women loved him of the original era when, you know, the whole bad boy thing was happening. And, you know, James Bond himself didn't have a lot of respect for women. So I wanted to explore all that and see what the heck is going on. And um, I just wanted to make sure that his films were covered beyond Bond and his career beyond Bond on stage, beyond the movies. He did so much. But what I did discover more than anything is, number one, he had a great sense of humor. Uh, number two, whatever relationships, just like with anybody else, that he had with anybody, women or not, was their business. And I've never tried to be judgmental or or write in a salacious manner about Hollywood. 
because we all have issues and the people in Hollywood just have theirs exacerbated because they're in the public eye. So, and let me just say too, that no man should be abusive to any woman. No man should be abusive to any man. No woman should be abusive to any man and no woman should be abusive to any other woman. So nobody should be abusive to anybody, you know, but things have in, in this cancel culture, however, we have to make sure we explore these things honestly and, you know, make sure we get it right before canceling individuals for the, all the wrong reasons. So it was surprising to me, again, that he had that sense of humor, but he was also this guy who did all this incredible charity work. I mean, he had his own nonprofit organization for the uh, youth of, of Scotland, his homeland, um, who are struggling. And he, and he still has that. And he worked with Richard DeMarco, again, his lifelong friend who wrote the, the, the introduction, to do that kind of work as well. So he's a very, very complex man. Um, and that was irresistible to not explore. Well, thank you for that. I have had a chance to check it out, but I plan on it. Um, I want to talk about, should fans hope to see Herbie J, uh, Herbie J back with more installments of Then Again with Herbie oh. J. Pilato? Well, you know, that was kind of like a wonderful thing for me, that show, which is still streaming on, on Amazon Prime in the first season. And it's still available on Shout TV, uh, the Shout TV network. Um, as far as the second scene, season, I'd love it. But, you know, if it doesn't happen, say la vie. Um, it was my lifelong dream to have a TV show and I did it. It wasn't the biggest TV show in the world, but it was significant. So, yeah, I'd love to one day do a second season. Sure. You know, if, if the uh, if the gods and God, the one true God allows it. And if the stars align. OK, <laughs> I'd like it. Um, in your opinion, would the TV selections of the 2020s make good classics in the future? <laughs> um, the reboot of Frasier, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't see us talking about, I don't know, any of the, I know the zombie thing has finally left us. But I don't I don't see us talking about the zombie TV shows 40, 50 years from now. I just don't see it happening. Um, the, the, the real issue, and this is my opinion, the real issue is that there's just so much darkness in these new shows. There's an edginess. And I get that we all want to have a realistic view of things in the, the modern era, but everybody is sarcastic. Everybody rolls their eyes. Everybody looks like there's no real diversity. You know, you had Gilligan's Island, uh, rich, poor, um, skinny, heavy, uh, smart, not so smart. You had, you know, th there was a real diversity there. And everybody today looks the same. Everybody is like gorgeous and perfect. I don't see any character characters. So I don't know. I mean, again, there's a lot of talent out there, but it's misguided, in my opinion. Well, <laughs> I tend to agree. To agree. Um, anything else you want to tell our viewers or our readers? Well, I'm excited about the Bionic book, you know, the new one. I, I revitalized it. I updated it with some anecdotes, different anecdotes. There's a new introduction by uh, Terrence McDonald, who wrote um, for the original shows, this is the 50th anniversary when, you know, I think the Six Million Dollar Man debuted and he in contributed to the way he was written to more realistic portrayals of all superheroes. So that's a pretty cool thing, you know, and and I'm, you know, I'm working too now for Remind Magazine. I'm writing for Remind Magazine, which is. That's right. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, the parent company of uh, a TV guide is the parent company of that. So I'm excited about that. Um, so it's 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 just all really, really good. I appreciate you know, you work hard as, as a writer and many people make it as a writer later in life. And that certainly was my case. There's some that are, you know, savants. They're born, you know, writing novels. That never happened to me. I kind of um, grew into my writing because I started out as an actor, which I'm going to start doing again, by the way. I'm going to get back into acting. 
Okay. Um, yeah, but that's that was how I started, and my music too. So. Well, good. Well, I want to thank you for your time again, for thank for you. letting the Hollywood Times into your your life again. Well, thank yeah. you for being in my life. Yay! Know. Love it. <laughs> Love coming to your book signings, and thank and uh, we're gonna have a, a good future, I believe, to keep 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 going on with this with this entertainment world of ours. Yes, and I'm excited to be part of eventually of the Hollywood Times. Thank you. Yes, me too. That's going to be cool. Let's come on board. All right, babe. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day and um, keep trudging along. Okay. Don't work too hard. Oh, well, that's impossible. I that's it. impossible. <laughs> okay. Thanks again, Herbie. I'll have a great day. See everybody. Thanks.